Uh, g'day, this is Bruce again, and uh, welcome once again to my shop. <clears throat> this is the third of the series on the cranky arm. Uh, I, um, I found since found out it's not an arm for a printing press, but it's an arm for a guillotine, which is part of the printing press process at any rate. So, to give you some progress on it, uh, where's our old one? We um, showed before how uh, we had to repair, uh, we had to make a new one of these and uh, we, we drilled through and, and connected the two halves together uh, to, to make that do. So what we've, what we've managed to do so far, we've faced both sides off, we've finished boring both of the, um, both of the bores, both of the holes, uh, we've drilled and tapped this uh, holding hole here and there was a, an issue with um, in here there's a hole that goes all the way through all the way through there that that's that's the holding for the crank arm to, so he's got the keyway on the shaft the keyway on the shaft here and then there's a tapered pin that goes through the shaft to to, to connect this together to stop it from moving backwards and forwards etc now the problem here is that to to for, to drill a new hole and tap it exactly the same as this one and for that to match on site and we're talking about uh, 2300 kilometers from here 1500 miles from here uh, is is really taken a huge risk and uh, of all the years very rarely have I seen that work in the end you don't need to, to get in there and and re-drill and, and it just becomes a mess um, and there's not much room, uh, apparently, on, in situ to do that. So what I've, what I've done is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the crank arm at this point. I've already drilled and tapped and put two, uh, for two bolts to go through. So this will, instead of being pinned onto the shaft, is now going to be clamped to the shaft. That'll make it a lot easier for him on, on site to be able to easily fit it and uh, get away. So we've done, we've, we've got all that side of it done. So now what we're doing is we're, is we're machining down the thicknesses and to bring, to give these facets. Uh, and this, so I've started with this one and what I've done is I've set it up on the, on the rotary table um, is in, with this one in center and started to machine around and I'll machine down uh, that thickness or almost that thickness. Actually, I'll come down to this boss thickness here, uh, and then afterwards uh, maybe cut a little bit more there. Uh, so what I've, what I've done is I've centered the, the table, and then in order to get this in position, I've used um, that's that's a 35 millimeter hole. I didn't have one, but so but what I had was an inch and three eighths drill, which is almost identical. So that fits in the taper hole. Uh, set a hole of the um, uh, of the of the table, and I use that to center up, clamp down the um, the part, and then I've started to machine. Um, so in the beginning, I put the dead center in, and line the line the table up with the center of the um, uh, of the quill. So here we have it. Here we have it. We've got. See if that works better. Um, We've got it set up. Uh, I'll bring that in. As you see, I've um, I've set it up. I put I've got two of the very small toe clamps in here and bolted down through uh, through the other the the eye of the other hole. So I'm going to machine this around now to depth, and uh, and then I will uh, carry on doing other things and reset it up with with this centre. Uh, in the center to be able to do the boss on this one and so forth. So what we'll do now is we'll we'll, we'll start her up and we will uh, we will cut around there. I'm using a a tool that that, um, that I got from Dennis Nolan. He gave us a few of these tools. They're carbide. Uh, they're, they're ribbed. They've got a radius on the bottom of them, and it, they produce a beautiful um, a beautiful finish. It's a roughing cutter, and it's absolute beast. All right, without further ado, 
we'll um, we'll get this uh, we'll get this cranked up and we'll crank around the cranky arm. That's a one inch cutter and we're running at uh, 1100 RPM. Probably even run it a bit faster. Noisy. The first uh, work a little bit quicker. Like a lot of cutters, they're happier if they're doing heavier work. I want to try a climb milling this time. Likes the workload. Cutting off some beautiful chips. As I say, I'm just roughing at the moment. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful facet. Absolutely beautiful.
cutting up nice clean shavings. I'll actually pull out, I think I've got another one, I'll pull it out and show you uh, on a close-up. So here we go, this is a beast, uh, it's also got this 45 degree chamfer here, it's, it's through so it can plunge, cut, give, provide a radius, made, mainly, mainly made to work on the, on the side as well, so it does all of those in one go, uh, just a brilliant. It's, it's, that's, a, that's a Niagara cutter and thanks to uh, Dennis Nolan uh, they gave me that, I'll show that again there you go thanks for watching and we'll, uh, we'll be back